Welcome to another F1 Fantasy video with me, Tom. Another week draws to a close and another F1 Fantasy weekend dawns upon us. And what a weekend it promises to be around Monza. Nice, fast, well, fastest circuit ever in F1 history. Wow, amazing. Um, so yeah, well, the team selection this weekend is the widest open that it's been all season, in my opinion. There is a vo variety of things that we can do with our teams. And I've been sort of umming and ahhing all week, thinking in the build-up to this... Um, and I'm still undecided, but over this video, I'm going to be talking through what's currently going through my mind. Obviously, we've only got FP3 left to do as of the time of recording this. Uh, maybe pick out a few more snippets of interviews from various drivers to, to see, you know, what sort of confidence levels they're at. Um, but in general, we've got a pretty good idea of where we're going to be this time tomorrow. Um, so let's have a look at some team selection um, ideas of what I've got in mind um, going into this exciting weekend. Now, first things first, obviously, the very important practice sessions, which we can take with a pinch of salt because, you know, they don't tell the whole story. It doesn't tell us necessarily the underlying race pace data. Because of that Perez crash towards the end of FP2, um, kind of stalled out some, some of the, the race pace um, laps that the, the teams were doing. So we don't really have necessarily a true representation, as well as the fact that it's the alternative tyre allocation this weekend, which messes up the whole running anyway, because everyone's running in lower fuel on hard tyres, for example, to make sure they can get through Q1. Um, so yeah, the, the times here in FP1, FP2 are kind of a bit like sort of in the middle of nowhere, really. So we can use them as a kind of a guide. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll bear these in mind anyway as we go into actual team selection. So there's the FP1, FP2 anyway. And this is my current team at the moment. This is what I had, obviously, in Zanfort, which did remarkably well. Very, very well. Everyone shot up in price. The Red Bull, not so much, only 0 0.1, but that's to be expected. And everyone else climbed up a nice bit of value. So I've actually, you know, if I, if I wanted, I could literally just go boom, 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 triple Red Bull, Yuki Snowder, triple McLaren, done. This is like, this is the dream team that I wanted uh, over the last couple of weeks. And you might be thinking, well, why don't you just do it then? You can afford triple McLaren, triple Red Bull. However, I'm not convinced that the McLarens are going to be super great around Monza. There's a lot of chit chat about them just not being good in the straight line. And that, that has been kind of the case throughout the season, really. Now, they're good around the high speed corners, which you know there's lots of high speed corners around monza so we could see them put in some good some good times but i just feel like they could potentially be some sitting ducks when it comes to those long long straights of monza and when it comes to the race on sunday are they going to potentially drop back you know they put in some good times in fp2 on that soft tire which they'll obviously be using to qualify it as long as they make to uh, q3 so we could see them do reasonably well in q3 but then drop back in the same way like the likes of the has drivers have dropped back like you know hulkenberg keeps performing well and qualifying. Are we going to see then the likes of Norris and Piastri drop back a, a couple of places in the race? And in which case the team like this suddenly doesn't look so appealing. And also it means I've got the budget driver back in. It's so, so nice. If we just go back to my other team for a second, what I had in Zanfort, it's so nice not having like a legitimate budget driver. Uh, arguably Albon was a budget driver at the beginning of the season, but now his prices shot up so much, he's not really a budget driver anymore. So it was nice avoiding the budget driver, I must admit. However, this weekend there's, like I said, a lot going on. So I'm not sure I really want the triple McLaren, but the possibility is there. And if I didn't want to go with the budget driver, I could also actually, um, I've got exactly the right money to slip in a cheeky Ferrari in here in the face of Carlos Sainz. And this is another team I kind of like. Again, I'm not convinced by the triple, um, triple McLaren. I could obviously also just sort of cut off Norris, put in Alonso and have a team like this. But because I can afford Norris and I think going forward, through Singapore and beyond, I probably want Norris to stay in the team. Kind of makes sense to just leave it like this, uh, potentially. Um, so this team, <clears throat> I really like, I have to admit. Um, again, I keep saying this, I'll try not to repeat myself too much, but I'm not completely sold on the triple McLaren. I know a lot of people are kind of jumping off um, the McLaren, so we're going to jump, and we're going to discuss that a little bit more down the line in terms of other alternative team selections. But if, if I have enough trust in McLarens, and this team looks r really, really lit, to be honest, um, with Carlos Sainz in there, a bit of Ferrari coverage as the Ferraris look particularly strong so far. They've been really good in a straight line all season and Monza is really all about that straight line speed. So having a Ferrari coverage in there could get a little boost in value. You can see Carlos Sainz has sneaked up 0.3 uh, over, after Zanfort. Um Other drivers up in that sort of range, um, we've got Hamilton, Perez, Verstappen, um, they all, they're all kind of only going up 0.1, 0.2. Carlos Sainz with a respectable performance in Zanfor went up 0 0.3. <clears throat> so if we 
<clears throat> excuse me, if he is now competing potentially for a podium in Monza, um, we could see a big jump in Carlos Sainz's prices. He's a little bit underpriced in comparison to the likes of those other drivers in his in his price range, like Perez, Russell, Leclerc, etc. In that sort of twenty million margin. So if Sainz does do well, I can definitely see a nice jump in in budget as well. So that's another kind of reason to go with him to keep climbing, you know, keep building that budget nice and steadily. So by the, you know, the final few races, we can really pack out the best drivers and have teams like this where we can avoid budget drivers, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, um, I do like the look of um, Ferrari in general, and I'm going to be talking more about Ferrari because they do kind of play into the fact that I might be using the chip this weekend. Um, but yeah, a team like this looks pretty solid. Um, the only difference really is um, between this team and the other team is Albon and Sainz versus Perez plus budget driver of your choice kind of thing. Can't quite, you know, just a scrap off Guan Yu Zhou, so Sonoda's like the next best thing. But, you know, you could even argue maybe Logan Sargent's finally due a good weekend if we could put him in there in that slippery Williams. Um, and people with slightly less budget than me, you know, 1.1 million and below me can also afford a team like this, which is pretty nice. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely open, very much open to just go in with the old triple Red Bull, triple McLaren, because, like I said, I've been saying it for several weeks, that it's the kind of the dream. And if I can lock in um, that team going forward, I'm quite happy to have them sort of going forward in, in Singapore. That said, now I think about it, Singapore probably is one of the tracks that probably doesn't suit Red Bull that much. So maybe it's not a track we want to triple up on on Red Bull. However, you know, street circuit, Sergio Perez, king of the streets and all that. So maybe looking further afield, maybe triple Red Bull, triple, uh, triple McLaren could just be lock it in for the next few races, maybe until the end of the season. So having the opportunity again, this is like the second chance I've had this season to have um, the triple Red Bull, triple McLaren. It could be an opportunity that I don't want to give up again. However, however, well, as previously discussed in the video, we have got the Ferraris to contend with, and the Ferraris do look good in both qualifying pace and in race pace. Now, again, race pace is a little bit debatable about how strong they actually are. We don't know for sure because we're going to get a lot of running and they're, you know, low fuel, etc. Um, so it's a bit difficult to say, but I, I've been saying it or thinking it anyway all week that if there's going to be one race the rest of the season where Ferrari should be strong, it's Monza. It's their home race. They've got the crowd behind them and hopefully they don't crumble under the pressure hopefully they thrive under it but this is ferrari so you know they're probably going to crumble but nevertheless nevertheless surely they drew a good weekend at some point and if they're going to have a chance at podium or potentially even competing for a win i think it's monza is like probably their last best chance of genuinely of genuinely getting that option um so if we want ferrari in our team apart from you know the signs build i've already looked at how do we get them in so if we just take everyone out so far that is not a lock for me the only absolute locks at the moment are on your screen right now max verstappen red bull racing that's how open it is this weekend that you know you could fill in pretty much any other four drivers and a constructor going forward now Let's think, um, let's imagine we want Ferrari because we trust them, dangerous thing to do, but um, if we want Ferrari, what's the best way to get them in? Probably you're looking at the constructor because the constructor is arguably the strongest part of your team. You know, they doubles up on those drivers um, for similar sort of price. We look at Ferrari 23.2 and we compare that to Leclerc 22.1. So just an extra million or 1.1 million um, from the clerk, you can actually double up on the Ferrari. So I do think if we genuinely think Ferrari are going to be podium um, podium contenders, then getting their constructor in could be sensible. However, this obviously has a big drawback because we've already got two other really expensive assets in our team. So with 39.5 million, what else can we actually afford in this team? So let's have a little look at what we can afford. Uh, I think it's, is it actually important? No, I think it's, it's possible with Sergio Perez in there as well, but I think we've got to get a bunch of, um, a bunch of budget guys in here basically. So Let's try and squeeze in as much as we can. We're definitely not going to be able to afford Lando. We might. Can we get Pi Piastri? I think we can just about get Piastri and a couple of budget guys in here. So this could be an option as well, Sergeant. And then you're kind of, oh, it's not great though, is it? And you're kind of stuck with like Lawson or something like that. So a team like this doesn't look great because of the because of the budget options that you get filled in. However, I would also urge a mistake I slipped into earlier on in the season is putting a little bit too much focus on the budget guys. And if you just ignore the budget guys, just bear with me. Play along with me. Ignore Logan Sargent and ignore Liam Lawson just for a second. Look at the rest of the team. How ridiculously, str ridiculously strong does it look uh, in terms of who's looking good this weekend? So you've got the Ferrari, you've got the Piastri and the Triple Red Bull. So, uh, you know, and if you haven't got quite the budget of me, then Piastri would have to drop down. Um, depending on your budget, he could potentially drop down to an album, for example. I don't know exactly what all you guys are working with in terms of budget. Um, I think mine's a bit above average, but I don't know exactly what the average is so i'm just kind of running with what i can afford and you guys sort of go off that a little bit 
Um, but yeah, I could, I could see running a team <clears throat> a bit like this um, if we think the Ferraris are generally good. I don't like those budget guys, but as long as they avoid a DNF, I'm kind of fine because that enables me to maximize the rest of my team. Triple Red Bull, who should be very strong around Monza, doubling up on Ferrari effectively by having them as a constructor. Albon, who's just in the form of his life at the moment, getting the most out of that Williams that should be good around Monza. And then <clears throat> Logan Sargent, if he's going to have a good race at all this season, probably Monza's going to be it. Um, not the most difficult of tracks to drive and the Williams should be good around here so maybe we can sort of edge our bets a little bit and go double up on the Williams and then you're kind of left with Liam Lawson who, you know, he did pretty well in Van Zandvoort for his debut to be fair um, it doesn't excite me putting him in my team but this is definitely an option um, alternatively, we can stick with we just get rid of these guys for a minute get out of there boys um, alternatively, if we want to go Ferrari we could also, you know, stick with the other constructors I think the only real contenders are Aston Martin and McLaren. You could drop all the way down to Williams if you really think so. And Williams does open up a lot of good driver op opportunities. But I just don't, I would not trust Williams as a constructor on my team personally. So for me, it's probably going to be McLaren. Um, then try and squeeze in um, Ferrari, a uh, Ferrari driver around that. Which I kind of already touched on anyway. Because I don't really want Aston Martin as a constructor. Because because Lance Stroll kind of exists, basically. Um, no no disrespect to Lance Stroll, but he's also not had a lot of running. Um, he, obviously, Drogovic was in FP1, and then Lance Stroll lasted like two laps before he had some sort of failure in his car, so didn't really have any experience today in the actual car. Um, plus, Stroll just hasn't really impressed me ever, slash, in the last few races. So jumping on Aston Martin as a constructor right now is a little bit unappealing to me. So if I'm not going Ferrari... Um, then McLaren kind of are the logical next step and then that leaves me with just like the option of you know Leclerc or Sainz and Leclerc it enables me doesn't enable me I can't afford him basically if I also want Perez I'd have to drop Perez and go with a more uh, balanced team um, probably squeeze in like Alonso and potentially Albon yeah and then again you get uh, one budget driver here and this team looks kind of reasonable again it's kind of your pick of your pick of your poison down here double up on the Williams again or go Lawson or Hulkenberg which doesn't really appeal um, so a team like this also looks kind of good however I do I do think that just that original build I went back to right at the beginning of the, uh, of the video with with signs in there um, it looks pretty decent and that does enable me to stick keep with Piastri so I've kind of gone full circle from starting with this team looking for different options and kind of coming back to this team, which kind of tells me that maybe this is a good team um, to go with. However, let's talk about the chips because there is a couple of options for in terms of chips. In fact, I was considering, at the beginning of the, the, beginning of the week, I was thinking wildcard, to be honest. I was thinking like just pile in on Ferrari and then wildcard my way out of it into Singapore or vice versa, just pile into Ferrari now and then sorry, use the wildcard to pile into Ferrari and then sort of edge my way out of it by using a couple of free transfers going into Singapore. Um, that kind of has fallen away a little bit by the wayside and I think I'm much more interested in the Limitless chip this weekend. Um, unfortunately, the way this thing, this website is structured, it means I can't actually get everyone in here because as soon as you hit your budget, it doesn't let you put drivers in so you can't fully see who I want in there, which is kind of annoying. Um, but we can imagine, use your imagination. We're going to go on a journey, we're going to use our imagination. So if we're going to use the Limitless chip, who are we going to put in there? Triple Red Bull is a no-brainer for me if we're using the Limitless chip. As in terms of constructor, um, Red Bull obviously in there as well and I think again Ferrari you know the, the opportunity of using the limitless chip um, the whole point of it is that when a constructor for example Mercedes or Ferrari are strong that's when we want to pile in and use a limitless chip um, <clears throat> this obviously leaves me only 1.5 so I can't actually put any more drivers in but past this I would probably go for Leclerc and then past that probably Lewis Hamilton um, I know he's come out in an interview after FP2 saying not happy with it blah 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 um, he didn't have a good time in FP2, but he did only go in the mediums, I believe. Um, and he, I think he had too much downforce on the car. He wasn't happy with it. George Russell, on the other hand, was a lot happier sounding. And in terms of race pace, the Mercedes, from the limited data we have, the Mercedes look kind of strong. So if I was going to go limitless, I would probably go triple Red Bull, triple Ferrari, Lewis Hamilton, most likely. Um, you know, past Lewis Hamilton in that final driver slot, you could look at George Russell, you could stick with someone like Alonso and Norris, past that you don't really want to go anywhere. Like maybe Albon, if you really think Albon's going to really excel that much, so you want to use him in your limitless chip, but it's kind of tempting just to max out the budget and go Lewis Hamilton, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, pros and cons of using that limitless, limitless chip. Um, like I've already stated, I think Ferrari 
Um, if they're going to have a strong weekend for the rest of the season, this is probably it. Um, holding on to it, I think um, it's definitely a lot of pros for holding on to that chip and just sticking to a, a regular non-chip team this weekend for, um, because it's not a sprint weekend and I would rather use my chips, uh, limitless chips, on a sprint weekend. For example, Brazil is something I've had on my radar for a little while because I anticipate the Mercedes to be pretty strong around Brazil as they were last year. Um, also, Brazil has quite a lot of like overtaken opportunities. So we could see quite a haul of points going in. And if we can pile in with a limitless chip in somewhere like Brazil on a sprint weekend, we could be absolutely laughing. However, you know, it's it, not everything. It's not the be all and end all using using these chips on sprint weekends. Just using them when when there's an opportunity could just prove fruitful. And before we know, Brazil could be a disaster. Mercedes might not be strong after all. And they could crash out and it's a, the whole thing's a flop. But anyway, um, that, that could also happen in Monza. That's just the beauty of F1. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, but the, we're doing our best here to predict what's going to happen. And I do think that potentially using that limitless chip this weekend is definitely a viable option and something I'm seriously considering. And I think to sort of summarize my current team selection thoughts, um, I'm still undecided on the triple McLaren. If I, if I just go back for a second to the triple McLaren build, in fact, let's just come out of it. It's a lot easier to come out and go back in. Um, so I can literally just switch out Alonso, shove and Carlos sign. So I'm tempted very much by a, a build like this. It's kind of um, nice and steady. Um, the McLarens, although they're not like going to set the world alight and they might fall back a little bit in the race and a bit susceptible potentially this week, going forward, I still want them going, you know, Singapore onwards. Um, so I do think that uh, it's tough. It's tough because I don't know. The truth is we just don't know. And I'm just kind of speculating on what I think are the best options. And I do like this team because it doesn't give budget option. It doesn't give us any budget option. I'm just not convinced by the McLaren. But again, what, what other options are there? If you go have a team like this, you know, what do you want to do? You could swap out Lando Norris and put in Alonso. Does that make you feel more confident, even though Aston Martin don't look amazing? I mean, it is Fernando Alonso. He, he's an amazing driver, so maybe you just want to go with that. And particularly if you haven't got the budget to get Lando Norris, Alonso could be a good substitute. Um, so maybe if, uh, kind of edge my bets a little bit. If I don't want to quite go all in on the McLarens, I could just cut down Norris into someone like Fernando Alonso. But there's plenty of pros and cons, sort of for and against using a chip, not using a chip. If you don't use a chip, how much Ferrari do you cover, um, if any? How much McLaren do you cover, if any? A lot of people are just offloading McLaren entirely, but if those people who are offloading McLaren, I'm not really sure who they're replacing them with because, you know, who, who, what are the other options in that sort of price range apart from Aston Martin? And as I've already stated, Stroll doesn't excite me, and therefore, for that same reason, the Aston Martin constructor doesn't excite me. Um, it's only really Alonso as a driver that is potentially exciting. Um, so for me... It's a, it's a really tricky, tricky, tricky decision this weekend, but I'm kind of leaning towards um, either a team like this and hedging my bets a little bit away from McLaren and going Fernando Alonso just because it's Fernando, um, or you know maximizing that budget using every single penny in the bank um, and going over the the triple the triple McLaren and sort of edging my bets a little bit with a bit of Ferrari coverage. And again, like I said, alternatively we could also just shove in the triple. Triple Red Bull, shove in a budget driver of choice and just kind of forget about the whole thing. McLaren will be fine, it will be fine, everything will be fine. <laughs> um, so that's kind of my summary of thoughts at the moment. Um, I'm very torn, and as you can probably tell by the uh, entire video of me just going around in circles, I'm talking about team selection. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of torn between using the, using the Limitless and not using it. Um, if you can help me out in the comments, that'd be fantastic because I would like other people's opinions rather than just me talking to myself. Um, and yeah, um, do we trust Ferrari? difficult difficult one isn't it so and you know using a limitless chip put, going all in triple ferrari it's like oh my god that is a, a brave thing to do but also could be a bountiful thing to do um however like i've already said could be other options down the line potentially but we're running we're running out of we're running out of races we are running out of races um before the season actually ends so I've got to get these chips in at some point so maybe now is the best time who knows um i will post my team as usual um on youtube community page um, ahead of the deadline um, so yeah that kind of summarizes my thoughts so far plenty to think about and um, then we've got a couple of weeks break before Singapore and everything changes around again so thanks very much for joining me in my new house by the way I'm not in my office yet because um, the house still needs lots of sorting out and the office is full of boxes so yeah um, I'm in the kitchen so welcome to my new house <laughs> um, yeah what do you guys think of, of team selection this week it's a bit of a headache isn't it but an exciting one so 
Have a good weekend and I'll see you all in a week or so ahead of Singapore. Thanks very much and good luck this weekend. Bye-bye.